<laughs> it's lovely to see you all. Yeah, really good. If you've not been in the church recently, uh, I think you'll see that there are a few changes. Um, positive changes. We've worked hard uh, and there's still a lot more work to do. Um, but we're getting there. Yeah, it's getting better every day, just like our life with the Lord. Getting better every day. Praise the Lord. Yeah. We're going to sing and praise the Lord together. Um, Andrew, Rob, and myself, we're going to play and uh, sing. You don't need to worry about um, having hymn books. The, num the, the words will be up on the screen. Um, if you don't know what we're singing, then just make it up. That's what we do up here on the stage, yeah? And what we want you to do is lift the roof. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Let's enjoy fellowship together. Let's praise the Lord together. We're from different churches across this local region, but uh, we have something in common. And that's a faith in the living Lord. Amen. So let's join together and praise the Lord together. Let's just commit our service to the Lord and then we'll start singing. Hallelujah. Dear Lord, we just come before you in the name of Jesus. And thank you, Lord, that as brothers and sisters, we can come together and join and praise. And thank you for all that you have done for us. We pray, Lord, that we will be blessed this evening as we come together and that this unity will continue as we go forward throughout the year. Bless us, we pray, in the glorious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It was great to do um, the Talking Jesus um, course for six weeks at various different locations. And uh, one of them was here as well. And uh, yeah, we had a, a good time, an interesting time. So I praise God for that. And uh, But uh, we just feel maybe time to get together as well, occasionally to have a time of praise and worship together. Um, different flavors of worship, but it's all worship. It's the same God. It's the same Jesus that we worship and serve together. And uh, so we just want to encourage you to just um, relax, join in, and just worship this Lord Jesus that died on a cross, rose again on that third day, Amen. and gave us eternal life. And that's so wonderful, isn't it? So we, we're, in, we're a blessed people, aren't we? Amen. Do you feel blessed? Yes. Eh? Well, give us a smile then. That's it, yeah. Praise God. We feel blessed, don't we? God is good to us, yeah? Yes. Praise the Lord. Have you had a great day? Yes. Praise God. Wonderful. If you haven't, afterwards, come out and they'll pray for you. On, and then you'll have a better day from then on. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. If you can, we'll stand and sing what a friend we have in Jesus. We've, we've, sometimes we like to sing some of the old songs. Um, so such meaning and such power in some of these words. And we just want to praise God together.
to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. No matter what your need is, no matter what your circumstances are, he's interested. He's interested. You know, when the Bible says he knows the very number of the hairs on your head, some of us have got less than others, so they're, they're a bit easier to count, aren't they, you know, but the amazing thing that, you know, the fine detail that God knows about you Amen. as an individual. Amen. And we think, is God really listening to me? He says, his eye, his ear are always upon you. Hallelujah. What a wonderful time. Praise God. His love is ever towards us. For me, this has always been a beautiful hymn. Here is love. It's his love that is vast, as vast as an ocean. Loving kindness, 
as the flood. Be just let the let the Lord's love just overwhelm you today. Just feel His presence as you sing this song and just worship Him and focus on Him. Don't focus on your problems. Focus on Him. Hallelujah.
thy truth love changes us. Do you know he wants to reign in you and me. He wants to direct our lives. He wants us to show us the best way forward. And he wants to protect us. His covering is over us. You are God's anointed. You are his precious children. And he watches over us. And we need to just continually submit our lives to him reigning in us and directing us. Stop. 
high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King. His majesty Jesus who died Now glorified King of all kings Majesty Majesty Worship Jesus. Bless the Lord. Matt, could I just ask you to, to just pray for us as we come to the time of a short word? Uh, if you just lift us in prayer together, please. Okay? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> I'll just try my glasses this way. Does that work? <laughs> yes, please. Father God, we praise you. Jesus came, Lord God, you've never abandoned us. Amen. You sent Christ Jesus to come and save 
him as, Lord God, and we thank you that he walked this earth, Lord God, that he taught us, but we thank you all the more that he died on the cross. Amen. And we thank you that through that, Lord God, we can have salvation. We thank you that because he rose again and now reigns forever at the right hand of the Father in heaven, Lord God, that yes. we can be saved. Yes. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you so much that you sent your Holy Spirit, Lord God, and we pray for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit on these streets around us, Lord God, Amen. in the name of We pray for them across our different churches and yes. where we come from, Lord yes. God. We lift up our praise to you, Lord God. We want more of you, please. We, we want to see others come into your presence and their lives transformed by you. Amen. Lord God, we praise you, we praise you. All yes. glory, power, majesty, and might are yours Woo! to come and be with us tonight. Thank Amen. you for this time of worship. And I pray, Lord. Thank you. Well, first of all, can I say thank you for asking me to speak this evening? I'm humbled in such presence of uh, you folks this evening. And I did hear the bishop say that Steve is going to uh, give a short message. <laughs> <laughs> Rob's just going to lock the doors. So, uh, <laughs> and I promise that I won't be too long. But if I am too long, there are still plenty of sandwiches there. So supper is available, praise God. You know, if you live in the northwest of this country and you said United, what would people think? Manchester United, wouldn't they? They'd think Manchester United. And if you lived in the northeast, what would they say? Newcastle United. Hey, Geordie, yeah, Newcastle United. What about here? What have we got here? Sheffield United. Are they united as well? Rotherham. Leeds. You know, they're all wrong, because I'm a Liverpool supporter, so uh, that's where it's at. <laughs> you know, if we brought those people together, would we see much unity? No. I don't think we'd see much unity. Will you see much unity as you go to Wrexham Ian at the weekend? Only between the Doncaster supporters. And that might, Ian, I have to say, might only be on the way there. <laughs> yes. You know, we have a lot of faiths and religions in this world too, haven't we? Yeah. There's only one true faith. Amen. But... There are a lot of faiths. And you know, what unity is there between them? What do, what do folks think and say about Christians? Do they welcome us with open arms? Well, some do, but the majority don't. They don't worship a living God. They worship a dead God. And you know, I've never understood that. How can they worship a dead God? And often, there is strife and discord between different faiths. Mm. Thank God we have a living God. Amen. The true living God. What about politics in this country? Is there much unity in politics? No. It's the last thing on their mind, isn't it? Unity. Now they're arguing over concrete. <laughs> At least it's wholly concrete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. And even in marriages these days, you know, that unity, that promise for uh, to be together forever, mm. 
You know, it's like a fashion these days, isn't it? That people can change and move on. Marriage is not the uh, commitment that it was. Sometimes there's a just cause, I accept that, but it's different. Unity is about, is about togetherness. It's about loyalty. And I think to some great extent that that's perhaps missing in a lot of places today. So we all know what unity means. It means coming together and being of one mind. And it's great that we as churches are together, together in unity. What brings us together? What brings us together? That's right. And what keeps us apart? There's a harder question. What keeps us apart? The enemy. The enemy. Well, yes. Might be us too sometimes, but you're right. Yeah. It's true to say that we share the same God. Amen. We all believe in Jesus Christ. We all believe in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Shed for you and for many for the remission of our sins. Yeah. And it's our faith that brings us together. But sometimes things like tradition, doctrine, location, how we've been brought up, how we sing our hymns. Do you sing like we sing here or do you have a more formal approach? However it is, some of these things might keep us apart. And yet, we believe in the same God. We believe in the same God. Anyway, whatever it is that perhaps keeps us apart to some extent, it's great, it's good that we're here together this evening, here to worship and praise God, the one true God, to share and pull our prayers together, to pray for this country, for the world, for sinners, to make disciples of the world. That's what we aim to do, to bring people to an understanding of God. What better task could there be for us, both individually as churches and together as churches? We all use the same book, the Bible, the Word of God, the inspired Word of God. And we use that as our watchword, don't we? That's the book that tells us how we should live our lives, what we should do, where we should go, how we should live. Mm -hmm. It tells us about the sacrifice of Jesus at Calvary. It tells us about his resurrection. And it tells us that we have inherited eternal life because of that sacrifice on the cross. So we use the Bible. People say that Christianity is a dying religion. I'm not so sure that it is. Actually, it's a living religion. But I actually think it's a growing faith. Better word than religion. I was listening to a guy on the radio not that long ago. um, Maybe a couple of weeks ago. And he's a big executive working for Apple. I love Apple, Apple computer, Apple phone, and so on and so forth. Good stuff. And this guy, a Christian guy working for Apple, was the guy responsible for developing the Apple Bible, the app that you can download as a Bible on your phone, on your computer, whatever. Now, there are loads of others that you can uh, download Bibles from as well, so that will enhance this a little bit. But he said that since Apple developed their Bible app, they have had 575 million downloads. 575 million downloads. So if you think about that, there will be families who have access to that across the world. Because Apple is a worldwide company. And if you add to that all the other non-Apple, non-iOS systems, uh, 
Got to be double. Yeah. Praise God. Wow. And it is quite evidently still the most sold, yeah. the most publicized text in the world. How fantastic is that? 575 million. So having mentioned the Bible, if you've got your Bibles with you, can you please turn to Psalm 133. Psalm 133. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron. Running down the edges of his garment, it is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Straight away in this psalm, brethren, and it does mean you sisters as well, yes. dwelling together in unity. How good it is for us as children of God to be together in unity, yeah. working together, experiencing that oil, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit, the oil of the Holy Spirit being poured out on us in unity together in the presence of the Lord just as we are this evening and it says that blessings are new every morning Woo! like the morning dew oh, man. and we have and he gives us eternal life eternal life how wonderful is that so new every morning is the dew the oil of the Holy Spirit, the blessing of God. And we all share in this. Whatever church we happen to go to, whatever way we have been brought up, whatever traditions, if you want to call them that, that you follow, that we follow, yeah. we are still given that indwelling power of the Holy Spirit when we commit our lives to God. In this church, as you can see, we've done a lot of renovation work. I'm standing on, can I stamp on it? <laughs> it's gonna stand, I built it. <laughs> Praise God, we had great time of joy and blessing, brother, didn't we? As we worked together in the presence of God, brethren, and the ladies supporting us too. Uh, we felt the blessing of God as we developed this church and we've more to do more to do yeah shortly it's going to be full Amen. praise God absolutely Amen. full you know it's a good lesson for us to come together this evening it's a good thing to think about I think we are stronger together I think it's an opportunity for us to share the load of the work of the Lord together not separately. And as the psalm that we've just read says that we can be blessed of the Lord together. Yes. We are one family. We are. we are all children of God, joint heirs with Christ. How wonderful it is then, then that we as a family can be together. Sometimes we see that families are split, don't we? We see that often. I was talking to a brother earlier on who has a brother who never speaks to him. Families get split. Mm. But we are in the family of God. Amen. How wonderful is that? How precious is that? Doesn't matter which church you go to. No. As long as you have that faith, that belief, that personal relationship yeah. with Jesus, yeah. then we are one family. Mm. So just to make you work a little bit more, can you turn to Ephesians Chapter 4, please. Ephesians chapter 4. Praise God. Oh, 
I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherein, wherewith you are called, with all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity. It's all the way through the Bible. The unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Amen. Praise God. One Lord, one faith, yeah. one baptism, yeah. one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Wow. Pretty clear. We need to be united yeah. under one God, one baptism, one calling, one faith, one Lord. We might attend different churches. Same point, we're in one family, the family of God. Amen. Praise God. So what encouragement we have from Scripture to be united, it tells us there Plain as the nose on your face, something's made my nose itch. There's somebody talking about me. <laughs> That's what they say when your nose itches. Somebody's talking about you. But it is as plain as the nose on your face if you read through the Bible. Unity, being together, pulling together yeah. is a constant and repeated message. My father was a great Welsh speaker. Preacher, great, great preacher. And he used to say that fellowship is what it says, obviously, it's two fellows in one ship. But they're both rowing in the same direction. Yeah. Both rowing in the same direction. I'm proud of my son who lives in Dubai, and he, but he's just recently rowed across the Atlantic. Four guys in a boat across the Atlantic. How proud Dad was to see them uh, do that. Wonderful. But it'd be no good if one guy was going this way and the other one was going that way. They'd never make it, would they? Fellowship. Yeah. Pulling together. Mm. Don't work in different directions. Whatever church we belong to, whether we continue to worship in those churches, that is fine. Mm. But let's make sure, brothers and sisters, that we pull together okay. in the same direction with the same aim the same responsibilities the same task yeah. to win disciples Amen. for Jesus yeah. to populate heaven yes. to make sure people have got their passport yes. I've been in Barnsley the last few days and somebody did ask me if I'd got my passport <laughs> <laughs> inevitable wasn't it yeah and were they going to let me out Oh, I got an excuse to see I'm a Welshman, so they, uh, they didn't hang on to me. I didn't say I belong to Yorkshire. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, say, some will say, what a shame. <laughs> so we have to fulfill the same purpose, the same purpose, pull together. And how do we do that? What do we do that through? We do it through the blood of Jesus. Just think about it. This man that died on the cross was God not only man but he was God yeah. and he shed his blood not because of what he did he shed his blood because what you and I have done yeah. because of our sin yeah. and on that cross he thought of you mm -hmm. thought of me and because of that sacrifice on that dark day and yet wonderful day because of that sacrifice we have a route into eternal life Amen. together yeah. guys together ladies you know if we're not together now in glory we're going to be together mm -hmm. one family together with the Lord and when we see him we're going to be like him so isn't that wonderful Amen. absolutely fantastic absolutely fantastic but it's because of that sacrifice that we have access 
to Jesus, access to God, access to eternal life. How wonderful is that? How wonderful that will be. And you know, if you're a believer in Jesus, your eternal life, as opposed to eternal death, your eternal life has already started, praise God. Amen. You're already on the way. How wonderful is that? Amen. You'll recall in the Old Testament, the children of Israel in Egypt, and there they were, slaves, long forgotten was Joseph and his uh, rescue of the race of, in Egypt when there were famines. Mm -hmm. Now they were just slaves. Yeah. And Moses went and asked several times, let my people go, let my people go. And time and time and time again, the answer was no, you're not going anywhere. And what happened? Of course, the plagues, plague after plague after plague. And yet still the answer was no. Then the Lord said, put blood on the doorposts, put blood on the lintels. Make sure that you're safe indoors and the angel of the Lord will pass over you. And in the homes of the Israeli families, no one was hurt, but those who were outside, the Egyptians, even the animals, the firstborn died. And of course, we know that the Israelites were then let go. Why were they safe? Because they were under the blood because they did as they were commanded. And that blood of itself meant nothing, but it was a symbol to the angel, the angel of death that came to pass over them, and clearly a symbol of the Lamb of God and his blood that would be shed on Calvary for you and for me. Amen. A very clear and obvious symbol that it is blood the blood of Jesus, the blood of the man who was also God, who died to save you and save me, that has provided the route, the opportunity for us to join that wonderful family. And of, of course the Israelites then traveled into the promised land, a land which is still theirs by right, by promise of God, but of course, full of trouble, full of woe, full of difficulty. But if we are covered by the blood of Jesus, we too might have trouble, problems, and difficulty in our lives. But what did Jesus say? I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. So whilst we might have difficulties, tribulations in the world, we know that Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is with us. And we will overcome. Definitely. Overcome because of the blood of the Lamb. Because Amen. of the blood of the Lamb sprinkled on the doorposts and the lintel in that, those times. But now the Lamb of God who died for you and died for me. And we now have a glorious eternity together in the presence of God. Amen. Friends, I think there is much more that unites us than separates yeah. us. There's much more that brings us together than divides us. We may have views, different views, different doctrines, different processes in our church. We might even have different views and different understandings within our church. But we are one body. Amen. The church of God is the people, not the buildings. We are one body, one church, one people through the blood of Jesus. Praise his name. Amen. So third one, making you hard, work hard. 2 Corinthians 13. 2 Corinthians 13. Praise God. <clears throat> 
Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace be with you all. It's plain, isn't it? It's written all the way through. We should pull together. We should strive to be together. We should encourage one another. Be of one mind, live in peace. So we must take this encouragement of Paul to our hearts in this time. You know, I think this is a time when in this country, even in this so-called Christian country, that the church is under threat. I believe that there is a tide against standing and being able to speak for the Lord, to be, what's the right word, without compromise perhaps, and build our faith on what the word of God says. And yet there is a raging, rising tide against that. Brothers and sisters, if you take nothing else from this message this evening, stand firm on the word of God. It is our watchword. That's what we must do as one family and as separate churches, to stand firm on the word of God. Philippians chapter 2, you don't have to look this one up, just briefly. Towards, somewhere towards the back of the New Testament. <laughs> so if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection, any sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Amen. So, I've said it several times, it's pretty obvious we should be pulling together, united, praising God together, working together, finding ways to come together. We've been encouraged to put aside our differences. Yes, to be of one mind, to be in the love of God together. Why? Because we are all disciples of God. Yeah. We're all seeking to achieve that same thing to populate heaven. Yeah. Disciples of God. Children of God, joint heirs with Christ together. So, just remembering that the bishops said be brief. <laughs> In conclusion, as a member of our church says that when a preacher says, and finally, or in conclusion, <laughs> you settle down <laughs> for the next instalment. <laughs> I promise only to be a few more minutes. What do we believe? I'm, my background is the Elim Church. Father was an Elim pastor, grew up in the Elim Church. And they have four words, their watchwords, saviour, healer, baptizer, coming king. Amen. Those are the words, the watchwords that we, I am sure we all adopt. Yeah. Obvious word, saviour, because of that death, that sacrifice on the cross. Healer, similarly, by his stripes we are healed. Both physically and spiritually baptizer both in water and in spirit we're pentecostal in this church you may have a different understanding of that that's fine but i tell you one thing if you're a believer in jesus the holy spirit lives in you yeah. and you are empowered by that holy spirit yeah we're a pentecostal church here but that's fine and finally coming king our hope. Yeah. Yeah. And when I read the word hope in the Bible, I always substitute expectation. Mm. It is our expectation that he is our coming king. Yeah. Not only is that he 
the fact that he is coming, but he is coming to reign. He is king and king of kings. How wonderful is that? Praise God. Do you remember the account of the disciples after Jesus had died, risen? But they were, I think they were somewhat lost. And they were all together in one room. Together and of one accord. They were together. And we read, don't we, that the Holy Spirit came, cloven tongues, and they went out and preached the gospel. 3,000 people came to believe because they were together and of one accord. Let us be together here in this area. Amen. Together and of one accord. Let's seek to find ways that we can work together, that we can row in the same direction yes. together, that we can worship together because we are stronger together. We are. We're united in the love of God, the love for each other. Mm. Excuse me, and as we seek to draw near to God together, He will draw near to us well. in return. Well. I look forward eagerly for the next opportunity that we can come together well. and worship together, same word, we're not too far away from each other. No. Doesn't have to be a competition about the sandwiches. <laughs> it will definitely be a competition about the trifle. <laughs> I made the trifle. <laughs> but we are under the same banner. Children of God. Children of God seeking to be one body together and to bring unders, uh, others into this wonderful family of God. So we are a united church under Christ. We are covered by that blood, his blood that was shed. We all receive God's love, God's grace, that undeserved love. And we all can enter his praise together split from top to bottom, wasn't it? Yes. Top to back, so that we can enter the presence of God together. Praise God. Amen. So my final thought is a, just a thought that I mentioned a few moments ago. There is more that binds us together yes. than separates us. Amen. So let's build on that Amen. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Steve, for that word. I hope you've been encouraged. <laughs> Technology, it's great, you know. Praise God. I hope you've been encouraged. And oh. Yeah, this one's on. <clears throat> it is now. Yeah, I hope you've been encouraged and blessed by, by this evening. And yeah might be a little bit different to what, what you do, um, but as has been said, it's one church, one Lord, one God, one Spirit. And, you know, something that we as a church have felt to do just recently, and I'm, we, I haven't met recently with the leaders, we haven't met, I don't think, for a little while, but I just feel God has said to us that we need to spend one hour in prayer, just waiting on God and saying, Lord, what do you want to do? Yeah. We don't come with an agenda. Yeah. We're saying, God, what do you want to do? And we're waiting on God for, and we're just spending one hour in prayer. And at the moment, we meet on a, on a Thursday at 12 till, till 1, 
and then we have some refreshments afterwards. And it's for anybody to come along. We may change the, the day at some stage due to various things, but at the moment it's on a Thursday. And anybody and everybody is invited to, to come along and just spend the time of just waiting and, and praying and seeking God and asking the Lord to give us his direction. We, you know, there's no point in doing something if God's not involved in it. And we need to do what he's telling us to do. And I believe that we as churches together will see this area being transformed. Because that's why we're here. Every one of us. That's why we're here. To see this area transformed. This area needs Jesus. This area needs a touch of God on the, its life. And so we're praying that God would direct us, reveal to us, that we together can work together seeing the things of God happening and, and see God moving in power. So none of us have got enough space for everybody that lives in our catchment, have we? How many meetings are you going to have to have to get everybody in your church on a Sunday? What do you reckon, Matt? Ain't going to do it, is it? There's no competition. Sorry? That's right. It's got to be outdoors. You'd have speakers outside and that and glory to God and maybe tents and everything, you know. But let's believe God for something great. A great outpouring of the presence of God and that the bride, the church of Christ will come together perfect Glorious to meet him. That's what he's calling us to. And I just want to encourage you, let's do it. Let's do it. What resources have you got that we haven't? What talents have you got that we haven't? At the moment, let's share them. Let's see, let's see the kingdom of God pushed back. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen? Thank you for being here tonight. It has been a joy. It's been a privilege to host this event. Um, our first one, really, in one sense, isn't it? And it's been a joy and a privilege to, to be here with you tonight. And I thank you for coming. I thank you for you, the way you've, you've received the meeting and everything. And I just trust that this word that has been spoken today will just continue to grow in us and to bring us to a place of a, a tremendous unity that the enemy cannot separate us, but it will bring us to a place of absolute power to see the kingdom of God established in the Doncaster area for his praise and for his glory, because it's him whose church it is. It's not mine. I'm just a vessel. Are you a vessel? Well, let's open ourselves up to God to move and to be obedient in what he tells us to do. And, just, and sometimes he tells me to do things and I think, oh, that's not in my doctrine. Okay, I'll do it. And I see results. I see God moving. Let's just stand and pray for a moment. Father, we just come before you as one body Amen. under one lordship through the cross into your presence. And Father, we just ask that all that we've done tonight together, that Lord, it would bring forth in some way an increase in each and every one of us it, Lord, it would bring, bring a boldness. It would bring a determination, Father, in each and every one of us to, to do more, to be obedient to you and to follow your leadings, O oh God. And I pray, Lord, for every church that's represented here, that, Lord, on Sunday, 
there would be a tremendous move and outpouring of your presence, touching lives, touching lives, Father. For Lord, you love your children. And Lord, we as your children just want to say thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for sending your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for touching our lives. And Father, I pray that as we leave, you'll continue to minister to us, bless us, keep us safe. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. There's a few sandwiches, I believe, less than bits and pieces.